Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about a video that went relatively viral on TikTok. There's a lot to be said here. I'm gonna preface this because I saw the comments on TikTok. I kind of predict similar comments here. So before we get into it, so the video we're gonna be talking about is a wedding vow video. If these people are happy with how the vows went, that's totally fine. That being said, you did put something on social media, so whether you want it or not, people will comment. That doesn't excuse nasty, abusive, threatening, blah, blah, blah. However, that does mean that you will get opinions. If it were me, I would never put a vow video on the internet for exactly that reason, because I don't want anyone else's opinions on it because it's yours, regardless. They chose to post this. If they're happy with it, it's fine. I'm just saying what I think based on what I saw. Two versions of this video were posted. One was a shorter version and one was the full version. We're obviously gonna watch the full version. I kind of had a little bit of hope left when someone's like, no, this isn't the full version, but the full version literally is not much better at all than the short one. So I'm just gonna put that out there too. Anyway. You're screwed. <laughs> Since the day we started talking, after falling through my bedroom window, within minutes I could tell you were the one for me. Then as time went on and I was falling deeper in love with you, I was and always will be one of the easiest people to please. Only two things are required to keep me happy, keep my belly full and my balls empty. <laughs> so you're now, like I said, if they're happy with this, that is great. I, I think, would have transcended outside of my body if at my wedding something like this was said, not only in front of my parents, my family, my children in their case, but also his mom is the one officiating the wedding. I don't know how that makes it worse for me because it's like you can't even avert your gaze from what's being said. Maybe it's also my sense of humor, the way I was raised with my family. It depends on the kind of modality, I guess, of family you have, because with my family, we don't talk about sex like that. We don't joke about sex like that. That's more something that I joke about with, with my friends because there's a level of openness that I personally do not have with my family. So if they're the type of family who talk about sex in detail, okay. But for most families out there that I know anyway, the modality is still very much, I'm the parent, you're the kid. <laughs> Like I said, with the way that I was raised, these jokes are not something I'd be comfortable with. You're amazing at half of it. We really need to get you some cooking lessons. <laughs> Even when my belly isn't full, there is no one I could ever love more in this lifetime unless I actually get a chance to meet Margot Robbie. Since the beginning, I was always told, I always told you I was going to make you the happiest woman in the world and give you everything I could possibly give. Well, today I'm taking a step further and giving you my last name, the last name of champions. The Margot Robbie thing, in my opinion, is probably the least of our problems here, but I saw a lot of people commenting about it. I think it's just one of those overdone jokes, because I've seen it, I'm pretty sure, in movies, just being like, oh, unless so-and-so walks in, I'm all yours, which is, I don't think funny really but I don't think it's that big of a deal either would I want that in vows no but then again I think that also depends that's something that has to be considered right how humorous you want it to be and also that your sense of humor aligns because for me like this sense of humor is not it no one deserves it more with you and the girls by my side I feel like I can conquer anything Y'all make life worth living, giving every breath of every day a purpose. Life gets even better when the kids fall asleep and you tell me to come to the bedroom. <laughs> Nothing's better than the sound of gagging and headboard slamming. Michael. This is where I personally think I would have truly just... <sighs> I feel so awkward just thinking about my family hearing this from my soon-to-be husband in her position. I don't even think I can think about it too much because I feel that uncomfortable. But the focus, I think, what a lot of people have a problem with is not even the sense of humor. It's really the focus on the sex, right? Because, I mean, you can do your vows whatever way you want. You can do no vows if you want, whatever. But I think that when you do have these vows, they don't have to be overly romantic. They can be comedic. That being said, 
a lot of people were pointing out there's no real vow being made here yet. It's not like I'm gonna be faithful to you forever. I you know, like, it, there's not really much of a vow as much as it's a series of sex jokes. I think we're at sex joke, like, two or three, if not even more by now. Even his mom intervened, being like, dude, and I, I think she did it laughing because obviously you don't want to ruin the ceremony, but I do think it's just uncomfortable for everyone, let alone the kids, because if they don't get it now, if they ever see this video, they'll get it later on. I don't know how I feel about any of that. I think in its own way, it's over the top because it seems like the kid in class who always tries to make everyone laugh, I'm getting very much that vibe. When the reality is that maybe his wife likes that and that's fine, but it also seems to be very much about him, which is something that was also pointed out in the comments. It was very me, me, me. Now we don't know what her vows were like. Maybe her vows were exactly parallel in terms of the content and the type of humor. My knight in shining armor, my best friend, my biggest pain in the ass. Our adventure started a little shy of 10 years ago. And in that 10 years, we have already accomplished so much together and created a beautiful life. When I met you in school, I started crushing on you, but I didn't dare let it be known because I thought you were too good for me. So I let it go. If they say if you truly love someone or something, let it go. And if it comes back to you, then it was meant to be. Now here you are standing in front of me on our wedding day. I'm more than thankful for every day with you. You have completely stolen my heart and I honestly never want you to give it back. You are one of the most selfless, funniest, caring people I have ever met, not to mention very accident prone. <laughs> <laughs> We've created two of the most beautiful girls in this world together. We bought our first house. We've made it through the rough times and the good times. And since I have you, I know we will always make it through. Thank you for choosing me to create your life with. I know I'm no model, by far not a good cook, unless you want soggy meatloaf. <laughs> and as we all know, I'm the real sleeping beauty with a temper. But thank you for loving me still, the way you do. You are literally making the fairy tale I always dreamed of come true. Well, maybe a little more funnier than I imagined. But it's still way more than I could ever ask for. I will forever want you rocking beside me when we're old, talking about our day, making jokes, recalling memories. If you could leave out the passing gas though, I'd greatly appreciate it. <laughs> I love you so much, Michael John Lentini, and I promise to choose you every day for the rest of my life and beyond that. Everyone keeps telling me that marriage is going to ruin a lot of things, but I feel that's only if you let it. Even if we fight, argue, or don't see eye to eye on something, it will never affect the way I love you. Marriage is something I take seriously and I only want to do once. After almost 10 years, I still stand by the fact that you're my soulmate and it will never change. After today, the only thing changing is me having to deal with the ring on my finger. You will forever have my heart and that's a promise till death do we part. P.S. Since you're so good at making decisions like marrying me, you can choose whether tonight's going to end with being a toaster, strudel, or a Twinkie. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm speechless. You're so <laughs> being that I am his mom, I will deal with him later. He is grounded. By all means. I feel uncomfortable. I don't know. A lot of people were talking about the bride's reactions. I don't really want to talk about that too much because at the end of the day, we don't know if she's a nervous laugher, if she's laughing because she's mad, if she's laughing because whatever reason. So I don't want to assume anything. Genuinely, I hope she's laughing because she thinks it's funny. And obviously there is nervousness. Being in that situation is rather nerve wracking. That being said, I think the mom seems uncomfortable. That to me, I would be uncomfortable if I were her. I don't know about the general public who was there. I just feel like this is one of those things where you want to have a memorable ceremony, right? And I think we've all seen this happen in bigger or in smaller events, whether it's like a birthday, a wedding, something in between that someone wants it to be so memorable that they'll do things that maybe you wouldn't do, things that are, in my opinion, too extreme, in my opinion, in this case, too try hard to be funny and different when it's really, in my opinion, again, this is no reflection of their marriage, 
it's vulgar. It's also somewhat tone deaf because I feel like when people go to weddings, they don't really sign up to fucking hear about your sex life, you know? And it's a lot, I think, even for the people who are there who aren't obviously the most important person. Your partner is the most important person. But if I were a guest at a wedding like that, I would feel so deeply uncomfortable hearing about any of that. Truly not. Especially if you don't even know the people that well. That's what I'm thinking. Imagine being someone's plus one and you've only met the bride and groom once and you're hearing about their sex life. I'm very particular about subjects like that. I only talk about things like that with like two to three people maybe so it's not i'm not the type of person who has that kind of sexual sense of humor openly in front of parents family whatever you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below what do you think about people posting their wedding things on social media i'm not talking about just like wedding pictures because i think that's expected and completely normal i'm talking about filming it and putting it out there because in one way i think it's quote unquote, not a big deal because there are some very curated versions, right? So you see the bride going down the aisle, you see vows exchanged a lot of times being muted. You see like basically what you see in the pictures, but in video format. And that to me is completely fine. Showing pretty much an uncensored version of everything to people who weren't invited, I would maybe just save for people who couldn't come or something like that. But I don't think I'd ever post it on social media just for the privacy of the event, right? Because unless you're live streaming the event, I guess, you invited only a number of people for a reason. So I feel like in my mind to keep it special and to keep that day yours and the people who you invited, I wouldn't really be putting it elsewhere. But that's really, again, people's own decision. I just feel like it's so private and having people outside have a view on something that's so private probably doesn't end well. Like here, hopefully the husband and wife are still on the same page that they both thought it was funny or whatever same page they were on before. Anyway, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. I'll catch you guys next time.